One of the strengths of this meeting has certainly been uh, for us as clinicians, for researchers, for basic scientists, to really understand where you're coming from. It is about you, it is about patients, uh, and it is very much what we're trying to achieve is to improve outcomes for everybody with, with these conditions. You've already heard her being mentioned as a powerhouse, so I'd like to introduce our first speaker, uh, Lisa Layton, Layton from uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, who's going to kick us off uh, with a patient perspective. Lisa, thank you very much. How do we leave our mark upon this world? It's the love we share and the lives we bless. We are here because of one remarkable man, Mark Clements. Stacy Lin Lindsay's brother was diagnosed with cholangio in 2005. His family propelled into action. Each person took an important role in his care. Every Sunday, the family would come together to share information. Soon a network grew to include 18 other patients and families. To quote Mark in a letter he wrote his family, life has given me cancer, but it has also given me the chance to become the person I've always wanted to be. I consider myself very blessed. Mark lived four decades and accomplished much. Kind and good, athletic and strong, son and husband, brother and uncle, friend to many, stranger to none, father extraordinaire to four, graduate of BYU and Stanford Law with honors, smart, successful, generous and loving. Stacy and Mark established this organization. Instead of using Mark's name, he insisted that it, it be called the Colangio Carcinoma Foundation. Bless the many we have lost. The grieving for the families and friends who will never be whole. For the newly diagnosed, for the livers with many cholangio challenges, the dear ones yet to be diagnosed, the family and friends who care and care, the doctors and nurses who give and give, the researchers who work and work, the board members, volunteers, and donors who produce and produce more. We bless this meeting. May it be remarkable. Whoops. I'm Lisa, a not so patient patient. It is an accomplishment for all of us to get here. For some of us patients, we didn't know that we would have the strength to get here. Just a few weeks ago, my husband was carrying me into the emergency room. Like many before us, we want to live with every fiber of our being. We want to feel good, and we want to live life. As a youngster, my days were filled with imagination, themes, and wonder. I would often pretend complete with costumes and accents. I loved the figure skater Dorothy Hamill and her signature spin. I even had the Dorothy Hamill haircut. I, I loved Linda Carter as Wonder Woman with her bracelets and her lasso, and Nancy Drew in her convertible solving mysteries all around town. Now, if only I could spin, lasso, and solve this Colangio mystery. As a young woman, I decided on a career in speech language pathology. After graduate school, I worked at a large hospital. I treated many cancer patients. 
never did it enter my consciousness that it would be me in the role of a patient. And for goodness sakes, a rare cancer that so many of us have never heard of before, after years of being in the, school, in the hospital setting, I decided to teach in the public school. Everything in my practice involved a theme. One of my favorites was a unit I called Take Your Dog for a Talk. I created games and I decorated my speech room with stuffed animal dogs and, and had a dog house even. And I think there's a dog here at the conference. In my personal life, I was cozy with my Siamese cats. However, there was a catch. I hadn't met Prince Charming yet. I kissed a lot of toads. <laughs> um, and I finally met my husband. I don't think my parents ever thought that that would happen, but it did. Um, and it was love at first sight. I'm so very sorry that Matt, my husband, could not be here uh, due to a work commitment. We lived in Pasadena, and life was a bowl of roses. After I became pregnant, uh, we decided to move to the other city of roses, Portland, Oregon, to be close to family. We welcomed our daughter Elizabeth in 2009 and our other daughter Annalise in 2012. I was the happiest I'd ever been. I had my wonderful husband. I had two darling daughters, a little four-year-old and a baby. There are days that my heart was just bursting with love and appreciation. I was working part-time doing telepractice as a speech therapist. I was active in the community, and I loved to plan parties and decorate patient lounges. And um, I, I was just living my life. But there was something wrong. I felt like a lazy ne'er-do-well. Um, I wondered, I, I had a pain in my side, and sometimes it was a dull ache, and sometimes it felt like I was being stabbed. I felt nauseated and tired and lightheaded, but powering through was my thing. Finally, in May of 2013, my husband insisted, you must go to the doctor. I visited my OBGYN, and she ordered a abdominal ultrasound. I'll never forget her phone call. Dr. Wong said, Lisa, there are several very large masses in your liver. And, um, oh, I'm, those are my kiddos. <laughs> um, and this is before cancer. I was fairly happy. We had a happy hive. And when Dr. Wong called me, she started giving me the measurements, and I had to get out my ruler. Okay, 13 by 5 centimeters by uh, um, I, I was, I was, I was aghast. Um, I called my husband, who had just walked into his office in New York. He turned around and was on the next plane back to Portland. As many of you can relate, life was a blur. At the local regional hospital, I had many tests. I remember the liver biopsy. I was the interventional radiologist even before he handed the sample to the, um, um, to the other doctor. Um, he said, I, I think it looks like cancer. I just wanted to get off that operating room table and go home and hold my babies. A few days later, the interventional GI doctor performed a second endoscopic ultrasound to biopsy the enlarged um, lymph nodes, distant lymph nodes. At this point, everyone agreed it was stage four intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. The general surgeon, who is um, a friend of ours, um, I saw him before he walked into my room, and he had been crying out in the hall. 
he handed me PubMed articles, and I'll never forget, I read the first abstract, and it said, average survival rate, six to eight months. Um, cancer arose and really messed everything up. Doggone it. This was a theme no, no one wanted. My once charmed existence had turned into a Clangio fiasco. Within two weeks, my husband and I were in Minnesota. I was vomiting and emotionally rocked. I saw many physicians, including a surgeon. My only mutation was KRAS, and the consensus was palliative chemotherapy. Um, there was no hope for surgery as per institutional guidelines. It was a very grim trip. We went back home to, and I started at Oregon Health Sciences University. I started with Jim Cytobine's cisplatin. After six treatments, there was disease progression and a doubling of the CA199. During this phase, my husband all but banned me from the internet. Uh, he found the Calangio Carcinoma Foundation. Um, Matt um, began communicating with Jason Scott through the website. Andrea was diagnosed around the same time I was, and our husbands were our respective super advocates. Through the CCF, my husband said, there's a really nice woman named Lisa in Ohio. I think you should call her. I reluctantly called, and, re and we hit it off immediately. We're like two peas in a pod. We say we have the Coco Chanel disease because the CC initials. It sounds far more glamorous. In August of 2014, my husband and I went to New York to a renowned hospital. The team consensus, again, was palliative chemo. An especially difficult moment was when the liver surgeon announced in front of a cadre of medical students, most people in your condition aren't here in a year. After leaving the hospital, my husband and I went to the American Girl store. I was determined to purchase dolls for my little girls. I feared this would be the last time I would be able to do this. A wave of sadness struck, and I stood sobbing in the bitty baby section. That evening, in total despair, we decided to call an acquaintance in California who was being treated for extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. His name was also Mark. Quite a good name. This was Mark Parsons, and he was a lifeline to me that night. My husband and I decided to get dressed up and go out on the town. Mark had given me hope. And the next day, while my husband worked, I went to see the Broadway musical Kinky Boots. I came home, and I was facing a lot of chemotherapy. During this time, Matt and I were ruminating and hand-wringing. I had kept repeating silently and out loud, I have stage four intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Two films came to mind, one offering a message of defiance. In Elizabeth I, The Golden Age, Kate Blanchett says, I have a hurricane in me. I turned to Matt and said, let's stop repeating this diagnosis over and over. My spirit will not capitulate to this disease. The second film, offering a message of determination, Rosalind Russell starring as Auntie Mame. Her message is, live, live, live. This became my signature slogan. At OHSU, my oncologist, Charlie Lopez, 
took my case in front of the tumor board. I met with the chief of surgical oncology, Kevin Billingsley. He was a man with a plan. Dr. Billingsley said he thought surgery was possible. It was aggressive, but he wanted to try. He just wanted to get some response from the Fulfirinox. That day, after driving home from OHSU, it was raining cats and dogs. And I remember I got home to our driveway, and I was dancing. It was like a scene out of Singing in the Rain. After eight cycles of Fulfirinox, looking like a Muppet character with little sprouts of hair and kind of fluffy from chemo, neuropathy, fatigue, and, and all, I pranced into therapy, or pranced into surgery, like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. The operation consisted of a right trisegmentectomy, six out of eight, seg six out of eight segments were removed, a wedge resection, cholecystectomy, lymph node dissection in the retroperitoneal cavity, and IVC reconstruction. When I woke up in the ICU and I was extubated, I asked my husband, I need my makeup bag. I need some lipstick. He said, this is a very good sign. <laughs> in the hospital, recovery was difficult. And I remember my brother said, Leighton, you got this. The next few months involved many medical procedures and several hospitalizations. I had 30 radiation treatments because clean margins were not achieved in the surgery. And I continued chemotherapy. Then I was, I was in the clear for about a year. Then the radiologist called out suspicious lung nodules. I was crestfallen a recurrence. I did not want to climb the Mount Everest of cancer again. We decided to go to MD Anderson for another opinion. I met Dr. Javle and the thoracic surgeon, Dr. Moran. I had 12 to 14 lesions scattered throughout both lungs. I had a right lung resection, and um, the surgeon was able to remove four of the lesions. Partly this was for diagnostic purposes, and it was the same cholangio with the 1KRAS mutation. I went back on chemotherapy, consisting of gemcitabine and 5-FU for almost a year, and then I had tumor progression. And Dr. Lopez at OHSU and Dr. Javle at MD Anderson said, let's try immune therapy and some stereotactic radiation. So in August, I had five stereotactic treatments on my right lung. And then in the fall, I had 10 treatments on my left lung. And I started pembrolizumab off-label at OHSU. In December, I was hospitalized two times because of a se severe rash um, over about 30% of my body. And last month, I was... Um, I had pneumonia, and it was a flattened pancake. I'm glad I'm here. Um, since, di since my diagnosis, I've seen a naturopathic physician, drank lots of organic juice, and eaten lots of healthy food. I've seen an acupuncturist, had massages, physical therapy, done kijong and yoga, and meditated, and made vision boards, and and um, painted and Reiki, you name it, I've tried it. But one of my favorite therapies has included retail therapy. <laughs> I came across a store with bright pink doors and a CC written on it. And I thought, uh, cholangiocarcinoma? Well, I'm, I don't know. Um, but it was Charming Charlie, and it is a wonderful accessory store with over 350 locations worldwide. 
it's a victory just um, driving to the store and spending time talking, laughing, shopping. It's life affirming to accessorize and sparkle. The corporate headquarters conveniently is in Houston, Texas, uh, the home of MD Anderson. I wrote a letter to the CEO, who's a rock star. His family has immigrated from Thailand. I was invited to meet him. Uh, his name is Charlie Chanathrapan. And so there really is a Charlie, and he is very charming. Charming Charlie has a program in which any of us can hold a fundraiser at our local store, and a, a portion of the proceeds go to the CCF. This Friday, we will be having an event just five, five blocks from our hotel, and 20% of the sales will go towards the Calangio Foundation. Something really amazing has happened. Um, for the entire month of February, all sales in the United States, 10% um, of the sales will go to the CCF. And all we have to do is present a barcode to the sales associate. This is the first time in their corporate history they have ever done a company-wide campaign for a nonprofit. And this is a man I just met in August. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not done quite yet. <laughs> like Mark Clements, none of us asked for this cancer. No matter what your role, Mark's legacy of integrity, compassion, and love lives on through us. Let's be remarkable, and let's be the people we've always wanted to be. Thank you. Lisa, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Um, you're immediately alerting me to a section that's missing from our next section. So we don't have a retail therapist here to talk about <laughs> technologic updates in retail therapy. So excuse us. That's immediately something we can add for next year. Uh, we'll have to find an expert. Maybe you'll be available. <laughs> 